Russia is launching another barrage of missile attacks today. At least four people were killed and several others were hurt as Russian forces continue to target civilian infrastructure. At the very same time, President Biden is now disputing President Zelensky's take on that deadly explosion in Poland earlier this week. Nick Robertson is live in Kyiv for us at this hour at the very latest. So, Nick, the bombardment from Russia continues. What are you learning about this latest wave of missile attacks? Um, we've seen a number of uh, different inf uh, vital infrastructure facilities hit in Dnipro, in the in the center and east, in Zaporizhia. That's where those four people were killed, 15, uh, 14 injured in, in Dnipro. Um, in Odessa, in the south, uh, vital infrastructure again targeted there. Um, Kharkiv as well in the northeast. Uh, here in Kyiv, um, the missile interceptions were effective. Four cruise missiles taken out, five drones were taken out. But what we're hearing from the energy sector here is that um, about 40 percent of the country is without electricity at the moment. And significantly today, we have heard from the gas sector here who say that it is their infrastructure that is now being targeted as well. So Russia has significantly degraded the electrical power generating and distribution system, as well as killing civilians along the way, and is now targeting the heating system. The temperatures have dropped here. It's snow behind behind me, it's freezing. The, the power engineers here say that because it is so cold, people are turning on their heaters more at home, and that, of course, is going to create more instability in the system. Russia intentionally trying to bring down um, Ukraine's resolve to fight the war. And on President Zelensky's statement, he has significantly moved his position. His latest is to say very, very clearly, falling in line with what President Biden understands, with, with what NATO uh, leaders are saying, is that um, he said, I don't know for sure what happened. We don't know for sure. The world doesn't know for sure. I am sure, he said, that it was a Russian missile, I am sure that we fired our air defense system. What he is saying is there was a Russian missile that Ukraine fired its air defense system at. He's falling in line with what everyone else is saying. Nick, thank you so much. It's good to see you. I really appreciate it. So CNN is learning some new details about the behind the scenes scramble that took place to get to the facts of what happened in that deadly strike in Poland that killed two people. The aim of the investigation now is, of course, to figure out exactly what happened and also to prevent further escalation between Russia and NATO allies. Natasha Bertrand is live in Washington with all of these details. Natasha, what are you, what are you hearing? Yeah, Kate, so just underscoring the urgency of the situation, President Biden, while he was in Bali, he was actually woken up in the middle of the night when information started trickling out around 2 a.m. Bali time that a strike had hit Poland and that it had killed two people. Now, this led to a series of very urgent conversations between Biden and his Polish counterpart, President Duda, and as well as the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, and his Polish counterpart, a number of calls back and forth to try to establish what had actually happened, where the missile had come from, and importantly, make sure that this was not actually a deliberate attack by Russia on Polish territory. Of course, Poland is a NATO ally. So that was really at the heart of these discussions. And it became clear very early on, we're told, that this was not a deliberate attack and that actually it was likely accidental and it was likely uh, a missile that Ukraine had fired uh, that then landed accidentally in Poland. And so as this was all becoming clear based on the intelligence the U.S. was receiving based on the conversations with the Poles, there was still somewhat of a problem in that the Ukrainians had already come out publicly and said that they believed that this was a Russian missile. Now, that, according to U.S. officials, was not very helpful. Jake Sullivan did call his, his Ukrainian counterparts there and say to them, look, let's wait off, let's hold, let's see what the investigation actually uncover. So now uh, it's just a wait and see game what the investigators uncover. Uh, Ukrainian investigators are now at that site in Poland looking at this for themselves, Kate. All right. Wait and see. We will see. It's good to see you. Thank you, Natasha. Joining me now for more on this is Democratic Congressman Adam Smith, the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee. Chairman, thank you for being here. I saw you say yesterday that in the end it doesn't ultimately matter whose missile it was because ultimately it's all caused by Russia. You have Duda already lowering the temperature, trying to by calling it a tragic accident. Why then do you think Zelensky has, is now so insistent that it is not them? If it, it, it doesn't really make sense to me when really no one is trying to blame them. 
Yeah, well, I think the only the only thing to keep in mind is President Zelensky has a lot on his plate right now, um, is dealing with the, the invasion, the missiles coming in, trying to keep the military um, on his side. So, you know, I mean, he, he should not be saying that. I'll grant you that. But I think it's pretty understandable why he might not get the absolute specifics of this right. I think that the big point is President Biden and his team really stepped up and handled this situation with exactly the professionalism that it needed. And it reminds us again how important it is to have a president with the level of experience that Joe Biden has to be able to handle this situation, to calm it down, to prevent any escalation, to work with the Ukrainians, to work with the Poles, uh, to get the res to the result we have, which is a reasonable way of looking at this. And also, the, the point, Russia invaded. Russia is launching missiles all over the place. Uh, the reason a missile landed in Poland is because of Russia, and we do need to be clear on that point. Yeah. Chairman, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has been laying out his position, um, his kind of take and position on the state of the war. He said last week that when there's an opportunity to negotiate, when peace can be achieved, seize it. And I also want to play for you what he said just yesterday. Please listen. The Russian military is really hurting bad. So you want to negotiate at a time when you're at your strength and your opponent is at weakness. And it's possible, maybe, that there'll be a political solution. That really that does not appear to be in lockstep with the with President Biden's position that Ukraine gets to decide when they and if they want to negotiate. What do you make of these different positions? Well, I've spoken with Chairman Milley, but I spoke with him just yesterday at considerable length about what's going on in Ukraine. I don't think it's that big of a difference. I think we have been clear, Biden, President Biden has been clear, uh, that we're supporting Ukraine. We're getting them all the weapons they need to take back as much territory as they possibly can. But there have been a lot of back-channel conversations going on. Um, Jake Sullivan was in Kyiv, I think it was a week ago, having these conversations about two steps here. Well, three, actually. One, we want the Ukrainians to be as successful as possible on the battlefield. And we have helped them enormously in being very, very successful. And I think Chairman Milley outlined that. Two, we don't want to go to war with Russia. We don't want NATO to go to war with Russia. And we're very, very careful about that. Again, President Biden's leadership has enabled him to walk that very difficult line and accomplish both of those things. Number three, we want peace. We want the war to stop. We have got to make it clear that we are interested in getting to that end point. And that, I think, is in keeping with what Chairman Milley said. He didn't say that we should force the Ukrainians to give up territory. We should, he said we have to be looking at how we get to the end of this. And I think that's a very consistent message, hitting on those three points, all of which are crucial to, to being successful and to helping Ukraine uh, to the best of our ability.